So if you're a new player to the game, new player to tabletop role-playing games, or maybe you're just kind of new to the whole concept of these particular games in general, you might be considering what would be discussed, what kind of things you're going to be expected to do, what you might run into, what might worry you, or what might you want to see in a particular game. And there is a section both in Player Core and in the Old Player Handbook, although in the Old Player Handbook it was in the Game Mastery section, but it is called the Pathfinder Baseline. It is a really good small summary of what you can expect during a game, what you should do, what you should limit your conversations to. However, once again, this is a baseline and we're gonna kind of define what a baseline is first because I'm sure I'm gonna get comments later about you know the toughness of players or those kind of things. But these are just good baselines, good starting points as to where you might wanna consider drawing the lines in your particular campaign. So with that, my name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist and let's go ahead and get into it. So once again, the Pathfinder baseline is pretty much just where you want to start your considerations for what you want to talk about in your game, what you want, the encounters and downtime, and what you want to happen in order to ensure the comfort and the fun of your players and you as the GM. Now, this should normally occur probably during your session zero, although you should be thinking about it before the campaign even begins or before you start trying to organize the campaign. And it could be a general rule for your particular table if you're a GM, or if you're a player, it would be a pretty set list of things that you're comfortable playing with or comfortable describing in a game. Now, the first thing I really, really, really want to do is I kind of want to define what a baseline is to kind of prevent a bunch of conversations and comments afterwards. Now, I am going to use the Oxford definition of baseline simply because it matches most of the other ones. And if you actually go and go online and look up the Oxford dish dictionary and type in baseline, I'm talking about the first definition, which is a minimum or starting point used for comparisons. So these things that are listed in the particular Pathfinder baseline section of player core and the old player's handbook are basically the minimum or a starting point, and you can adjust it up or down per your table. Once again, Pathfinder is just a set of rules. It isn't a game in and of itself, or maybe not a set of rules, maybe a set of rules and guidelines on how to run a game and the settings and what occurs during those particular games that you're playing are kind of dependent on the adventure. If you're doing an adventure path, they're pretty much gonna follow this baseline. If you're creating your own adventure, you can have it be whatever you want it to be. If you want to run it for kids, you can go ahead and really go well and above this particular baseline in order to ensure that there are no questionable things within your campaign. And if you're playing for a group of people that you know well, then you know what their baselines should be and you can adjust it as you see fit. But once again, this is the baseline that Paizo and Pathfinder recommend that you keep your campaigns to. So, this is just a set of basic assumptions that work for a large portion of groups. So you can kind of think of this as the 80-20 rule, where for 80% of the tables, these are going to be the general baselines, and there's going to be 20% that are going to be either above or below what these baselines should do. And there is some more guidance as to what you could do, very specifically in the Game Mastery Guide, if you're using the Player's Handbook and not using Remastered Rules, or GM Core. Now, the things that they list are, I don't want to say specific, but they are a set of things that cover most questionable topics. So we're going to start out with the first one, which is bloodshed, injuries, and dismemberment. They can be described, however, excessive descriptions of gore and the cruelty in inflicting those particular injuries, bloodshed, and dismemberment should be avoided unless it's agreed upon by your game. And once again, if you're playing for kids or people or a table who doesn't want really big descriptions, then you don't have to go into descriptions of the particular things that are happening. Now, romantic and sexual relationships are another thing that they're talking about. They can happen in the game, but you should avoid being overly suggestive. If you are playing on a virtual tabletop and you're playing with people that you don't know personally. You might've been playing with them for a while. There are things that 
if all of a sudden a relationship thing comes up and you start being overly suggestive, that could really bring down the tone of the game. Or if you're playing with a group of players you know well, then you should pro then you probably will know what their limits are. Generally speaking, sex is going to happen kind of off screen. You can think of it as those old movies where, you know, they'd have the, uh, the camera would pan off to the side to the clouds or something like that while music was playing in the background. Um, and one player character attempting to initiate a relationship with another player character should generally be avoided unless there's some type of established consent that was done before this happened. In other words, you wouldn't have a player character try to hit another player character just out of the blue without the hit upon player character knowing it's going to happen beforehand. Generally speaking, you want to keep the unwanted sexual advances outside of the game if you can. Then another one they say is excessively gross or scatological descriptions. So they do list these a little bit more specifically, but generally speaking, know the level that your player wants. You should establish this at your session zero, or if you're playing with a group of your friends, well, they're your friends, so you should probably know and be willing to talk about it with them. These include things like torture, um, rape and non-consexual sexual contact or sexual threats. Then there's harm to children, owning slaves or profiting from slavery. Once again, I know that this was a kind of a contentious issue going from Pathfinder first edition to second edition, simply because it existed more in Pathfinder first edition and was kind of taken out during Pathfinder second edition. And then there are things like reprehensible uses of mind control magic. So those kind of make sense. Now, once again, you are fighting, generally speaking, if you're the good guys, you're fighting evil creatures. If you're evil, you might be fighting good creatures. However, generally speaking, this is a game of heroes and you are generally a hero in your own mind, at least. So I'll use that as kind of where I'm coming at with this argument, but they are basically saying, and their exact words here are villains might engage in such acts off screen, but many choose not to have villains engage in these activities kind of in live descriptive text. So there could be things that happen, but it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to describe them happening. Now, just to reiterate here, now that we're kind of done with that particular section, once again, it does actually exist in Player Core and the Player Handbook, and you can find more information about it in GM Core, and you can look online and listen to other YouTube videos about what they do or how they do it. And you can also preview some of these things in the player's handbooks that you can download from Paizo before you start an adventure path. If you're concerned about what might be involved in that particular adventure path you're doing, and there is the fact that Paizo is going to start labeling if there are adventures that are kind of appropriate for children as well. However, this is just a baseline of what you should do. Once again, I'm going to consider it like the 80-20 rule, where these baselines are going to be fine for 80% of tables, and then there's going to be the 20% that might be above or below these baselines. It is up to you as a GM and you as the players to kind of get with your group and decide what you want to play, how you want to play, how you want to describe these actions. Now, I do hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit that notification bell, but whatever you do, I hope you have a great day and happy adventuring. Thanks. Thank you.